Welcome to St. Luke's Church this morning. Uh, those of you here in the sanctuary, those of you online, it is good to be together on this day of the Lord. Grace, mercy, peace to all of you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I would encourage you to make sure that you look at the bulletin and make sure that you look at the screen. Um, last week we had people that missed things in both. So um, make sure you um, read what's coming up. Um, and um, I just want to pause right now and say thank you to all of you for uh, the fine and wonderful gift you gave me and my family and Christine last week. Um, it was a very much appreciated day. And you know, the greatest thing that I walked away, well, two things. One, we should have the tape on the back rows every Sunday. <laughs> and two, God is not done with me yet and God is not done with you yeah so amen there's a lot left to do um, speaking of a lot going on we have eight youth two adults who are getting close to the end of their weekend at Village uh, Creek Bible Camp. And uh, some of you have followed their uh, events online. Um, it is exciting. I've, um, the, between the Christian Education Board and the youth group funds, we were able, uh, St. Luke's Church was able to send the entire group um, to camp uh, for this retreat this weekend. And I've already had a couple of parents contact me and say, please, please, please tell the church thank you so thank you um, it was a very gracious thing and uh, they are going to come back changed we need to continue to pray for the continued changes in their lives from this weekend poinsettias I think we are like two three weeks out from the deadline for poinsettias. Is that crazy or what? So take a form, fill it out, make sure you get that turned in. Um, they are back on the table in the back. Speaking of in the back, make sure you check out the food swap. Um, I noticed some extra things there have showed up. If you need something, take it. If you know somebody who needs something, take it. If you know somebody that could use it all, take it all. And there is, I think, still a big box of acorn squash. And if you don't take them all, Christine's gonna, and I'll be eating squash for quite a while, okay? Which is just fine. I like them, okay? But they are there for you to take. Um, take as many as you will use. Give those away, too. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, I did want to update you all. Um, we were able to uh, meet this week, and uh, if you haven't heard, um, um, Larry Bleggan's funeral will be coming up November 4th. Uh, the visitation will be at 2 p.m. service at 3, and uh, that's a Friday. And um, the um, uh, a meal afterwards so um, we, you should be seeing that um, made available uh, as we move forward um, and I see so is back here so welcome so and um, you know it sounds weird but I'm going to say it I'm looking forward to celebrating Larry's life and, um, and I invite you to join us in that um, Operation Christmas Child continues. You've seen uh, the October uh, toys, hygiene items, wow, wow items. We're doing great. Make sure you take your own box for your own family. Um, uh, we also are collecting funds to help pay for shipping. Uh, as of as like everything else, shipping has gone up um, considerably. Uh, they have not raised their rates that much. So we uh, last year were able to help 
help out considerably and help out um, um, Samaritan's Purse with some extra shipping costs. So we're collecting that as well. And then on November 12th, Saturday, we'll have a packing party. Um, it's going to be a, a fun time. And then an all-church potluck. Make sure you make plans to be here for that. Along with that, I would invite you to uh, turn your attention to the screen. The river behind me is the Suriname River. And the Suriname River brings us where the, the Sarmakans people are. Operation Christmas Child have to use a boat and the boxes in the boat and travel up to the river. It is very difficult to reach those people. Partnering with the local churches in Suriname can bring the gospel to children in unreached places, such as the Saramakans. It is important that we support the local churches. For these churches, we equip them, and then we provide the shoe boxes, which is a gospel opportunity. And so we use the shoe box gift as an opportunity to get into these communities and share the message of Christ with the children. I am one of the Saramakan. Uh, I born a Saramakan. I also received Christ. Christ changed my life. He gave me a future. I care about them. I want to see that they also uh, find what I have, Christ in me. And that's what I want to also, that Christ will be also in them. A shoebox is a tangible expression of God's love because these children, most of them have never received a gift. And so receiving a gift box for the first time really demonstrates the love that God has for them through those who are partnering with the ministry and those of us who travel there, they see God's love through this gift of a shoebox. The shoebox gifts are open the door, they spread the news, there's an Operation Christmas Child activity. After that out outreach event, we take the step by step how they can uh, get friends with Jesus. the greatest journey because someone did it for me so if someone did not I would never knew about Jesus my vision for the Salma tribe is that we will share the gospel and to establish a host church here so that they also can receive the, the, the blessing of Christ Isn't it cool to think that maybe one of our boxes would be on a little boat like that, heading to some people group that is tough to get to, and uh, they'll open it up and find something from you. And uh, what an exciting opportunity. We continue this morning. In our worship and our praise. Would you join me? The call to worship is found in your bulletin. We read responsively. Praise to our God who answers prayer. Happy are those who live in your courts. You are the hope of all things, O oh God. You make the evening and the morning shout for joy. Rejoice in God, dear friends, and be glad. Let us shout and sing together for joy. Will you do me a favor and open up to hymn number eight in your hymn book? And I... I'm just overwhelmed by something this morning. I didn't really look at this um, when I chose this hymn. But if you look down at the bottom, the words to this hymn, do you realize if I've done my math right, that's 500 years ago, 1522? The Church of Jesus Christ has been speaking and singing these words for 500 years. About 44 years later, this melody was put with these words. And I was saying to Kathy this morning, can you just let your mind think 
about all the voices over the last 500 years that have joined together and sung what we're going to sing. It's kind of humbling, and it's kind of cool if you're a weird history geek like me. So we join our voices as Kathy leads us in singing, All Glory Be to God on High. Will you rise with me? join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people and we come to give you thanks. May you feel the joy of, uh, may we feel the joy of your presence. We ask that you would help us show your grace in the words and actions of our lives. We ask that you would bring us into your presence today and forever. 
Lord, we join our voices and we lift before you our prayer of confession. We pray together. We are here, O oh God, to worship and to pray. We are here to give you thanks for all you have given us. Forgive us when we look down on those who are different. Help us see all people as loved by you. Help us truly be your sons and daughters who know what we are called to do, no matter our age or our circumstances. Help us dream your dreams and then live those dreams into reality. Help us to treat each other with love. Help us run the race you set before us. Help us be what you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite you all to be encouraged and to not lose heart. Those who humbly admit their sins find favor with God. He answers our prayers as we come before him. He forgives our sins. This is the good news today, that we are forgiven. you are seated this morning, gathered around you, is someone who needs you to greet them. Will you go and do just that? share something with you this morning and, and uh, that last hymn uh, I, I, I kept thinking I was messing up and, and it wasn't Kathy messing up that song has a lot of F's right above middle C and I found out this morning that the F on middle C right here sticks and so every time Kathy plays it she has to stop and pull it back up <laughs> And, uh, and, and so, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, I think a bucket showed up. Am I right? Did a bucket show up? I, 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 why don't you bring that bucket up here, and if you are a young person and would like to join me up here, I would love to have you come join us. And um, here it comes. Here comes the bucket, and she's got a big smile on her face. Um, have a seat. You know, when I gave you the bucket, her dad said, Are you sure? And uh, so I don't know. Do I need to worry? Well, she says I don't need to worry. Um, we know that it can't be alive, right? We know that it can't stink or smell, right? And we know that it can't have anything to do with a snake, right? So we, we're pretty safe then. Yeah, we can't do that. All right, let's see if I can. Here she comes. Come on. Um, there you go, and uh, it is good to have you all up here. Let's see if we can open this. Oh, okay. Now, let's reach down here. Oh, it's way down there.
Is this something a princess would wear? No? I, I thought it was a crown. I see it. It's not a crown? I see it through the bottom. It is a crown. Look at that. Look at that. I got that for my birthday. You got that for your birthday? Well, maybe you're a princess. Are you a princess? Yeah. Do I, how do I look? Ooh, I have one. <laughs> is that good? It's kind of small for me, but it doesn't look too bad, does it? So what do we, why do we, why does people wear these? Why do people wear these? Because they're princess. Because what? Maybe because they're like princesses. Because they're, they're like princesses? Yeah. And, and, and people wear them to, to look, you know, fancy, right? And uh, yeah, there's nothing else in there. That's it. So, what do, so, if I have this on, and I talk funny. Yes, you all must listen to me now, right? Because I have a crown, right? No! no. It doesn't make any difference? No! You're not going to listen to me anyway? So you're just like them? Oh, you know, you know what? Sometimes people think they're really special and they think that everybody else should listen to them and they think that everybody else should do things for them. Yeah. No. You know what? Jesus wants us to do things for other people. Even when we have a princess crown on, he wants us to do things for other people. And, and you know what? Jesus is really happy when we do that. So, here's what I want to do. I want to encourage all of you this week, I want you all to do something nice for somebody in your house. <gasps> All of a sudden, they aren't looking at me. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Do something nice for somebody in your house. Can you do that? Yeah. All right. And then we can remember when we see a crown that we're supposed to help other people out, okay? Thank you for bringing that. That was wonderful of you. Can we pray? Put it on. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me help others this week. Amen. You guys were wonderful. Um, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, somebody said I need a list on the side of the box, but the the bucket. But um, somebody who hasn't had the bucket, he hasn't had what? I, back here? Okay, right here. Okay. Would you like the bucket? Okay, there you go. Can you guys walk back to your seats, and we will work on getting everybody the bucket. <laughs> that. Thank you. Thank you for coming up here. Are you ready? This morning, the scripture from Psalms will be shared by Deb Arguth. Psalm 65, a psalm that focuses on praising the Lord, praising the nature and the many blessings he's given his people. Psalm 65, 1 through 8. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to, to you, all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you chose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. 
You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, you who stilled the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawn, dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. The Lord bless his holy word. Amen. We continue this morning praising God, worshiping Him by bringing to Him our tithes and our offerings. Ushers, would you come? Praise God from We share together in the prayer of dedication is found in the bulletin. We pray with one voice. God, we are so grateful you claim us as yours. We thank you with all our heart for the saving of our souls. We offer you what we have, our resources, our time, our energy, and ourselves for your ministry in the world. Amen. You may be seated. So I don't know about you, but... Uh, Harvest Supper hasn't even happened yet, and I'm already tired. We got a lot going on this week, and a lot of you, I, I was talking to some people this morning that have never experienced Harvest Supper. Um, they're actually kind of excited, and uh, I'm excited. Christine and I were not able to be here for Harvest Supper last year, and uh, so it is good to be here and not be sick. Knock on wood. There we go. Um, and I just want to share something. My, my hearing aids talk to me, all right? And so when people say they hear voices in their heads, I really do, okay? And I got up to the altar this morning, and I set the plates down, and it said, battery low. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know, it's kind of true sometimes, isn't it? That our battery gets kind of low. And I think maybe my battery's kind of low this morning. So will you join me in prayer as we come to his word? Heavenly Father, we ask for your spirit to just absolutely be alive right now. And to bring energy and power. Father, we ask that you would open our hearts and our souls and our minds, that we would hear from you, that you would watch over my lips, that I would speak on your behalf, that you would give us all the energy we need to be courageous and bold for you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a pastor in Kansas City, Kansas, who was 
trying to line up opportunities for the people of his church to, to sh uh, share in uh, uh, demonstrating Christ's love by actually doing projects and things out in the community. And he began phoning um, uh, grocery stores and other uh, businesses and um, asking for permission to do very specific tasks. He laid them out there. And in one call, the employee who answered the phone hesitated and then said, well, I'll have to ask the manager. But first, let me understand, uh, let, me be, you know, let me get this, right? He says, you want to clean up the parking lot, ret retrieve shopping carts, hold umbrellas over customers if it's raining, and you don't want anything in return? That's right, said the pastor. So the employee put the phone on hold, and after a little while came back and he said, you know, I'm sorry, but we can't let you do that because if we let you do it, we'd have to let everyone else do it too. Isn't that sad? Why not let everyone else do it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone found a way to serve others? It'd be, well, it'd be a little like heaven on earth. If you want a little heaven on earth in your home, if you want a little heaven on earth in your workplace, if you want a little heaven on earth in your relationships, if you want a little heaven on earth in the church, then the challenge today is to learn how to serve one another. And did you know, did you know that this is the reason, serving one another, is the reason that Jesus Christ came to set us free? Let me show you. If you turn to Galatians chapter 5, and I would encourage you to do that if you have your Bible along. If you don't have your Bible, I would encourage you to pull the Red Pew Bible out. We are going to look at a number of passages this morning, and I want you to see them for yourself. But in Galatians chapter 5, in verse 13, the Apostle Paul wrote these words. You, my brothers and sisters, we're called to be free. This is why Jesus came. He called you to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. We have been looking at ways to be building up the body of Christ. And today we learn through love we are to serve one another. The Galatians that Paul was writing to, uh, they had come up with this idea that, yeah, okay, we can be saved through Jesus and, and all that grace and mercy stuff, but you know what? We got to do something. And Paul wrote to them to say, no, that's wrong. It's by grace alone. And Paul taught them that, yeah, they are free. They were free so they could love. And since you're free, Paul said, don't serve yourself. Don't indulge your sinful nature. Don't let your freedom become a base camp where all the things of this world kind of hover around in that little camp and then spread out through your life. No, he says, use your freedom to serve others in love. So what does that mean? What does it mean to serve one another and how can we do it? Well, what we need to understand is serving others is God's path to greatness in his kingdom. From Matthew chapter 20, 
Let me set this up a little bit for you. A couple of Jesus' guys, James and John, had come to him and asked him for special places in heaven. And he kind of set them straight. But then the other ten guys heard about it and they got a little angry. And so Jesus pulled them all aside and he said in verse 25, he said, called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We think the way to greatness is through being served. You know, if I wear a little crown, right? Right? The more important I am, the more I get served. Or the more I am being served, the more important I am. And the greater I must be. But God says those who serve will be the greatest in his kingdom. Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, was founded by Jerry Falwell. You remember that name? Jerry Falwell uh, was, well, the, 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 the mainstream media painted him in a really bad light. And they made him out to be uh, something that was not always pleasant. And the main reason for that was because he stood for righteous, godly living, and he stood against evil, godless living in our society. But there was a different side to Jerry Falwell that very few people got to see. And I ran across the story of a student who at the uh, Lynchburg, or Liberty University there in Lynchburg. And the student had a, a flat tire right outside the window of a Jerry Falwell's office at the university. In his coat and tie, in the pouring rain, he went out and invited the student to come in and stay dry until the, the storm passed. Well, the student explained to him that he had a very important um, appointment that he had to get to and he couldn't wait for the storm to pass. So, to the student's surprise, Jerry Falwell personally helped him change the tire in the pouring rain. And they didn't have an umbrella, they didn't have anything, and so they were soaking wet, and finally they got the tire changed, and uh, uh, Jerry Falwell then pulled out a soaking wet wallet, gave the student a $20 bill, and sent him on his way. What we need to understand is that in God's kingdom, it's serving others in love and humility that makes a Christian great. Jerry Falwell founded a university. He had TV shows. He uh, spoke all over the country and all over the world. Um, he was the uh, founder of what was called the Moral Majority at the time that still has um, influence in political realms of our country. None of that is what made him great. What made him great was that he was willing to change a tire in the rain. In both the Old and the New Testament, people who uh, persevered in their faith, who uh, gave humble service to the Lord by helping others, are told time and time again that they will, they will rule in the future kingdom. But before ruling in the future kingdom comes serving in this kingdom. Serving is God's way of advancement in his kingdom. I did a little search. Only love and holiness are mentioned more in the Bible than serving. Those are the big three. 
serving others in love is the way Jesus intended believers to follow in his footsteps. The New Testament authors, um, almost all of them speak of um, being Christ followers and imitating Jesus. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, Be followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also loved us. Peter said, For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving us an example that you should follow his footsteps. John said, Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Everything Jesus did was perfect and right and pleasing in the eyes of God the Father. So any time we follow his example, we are on solid ground. But there's only one time, one time in the Gospels where Jesus himself told us to follow his example. And it's found in John chapter 13. Now I'm gonna, we're going to go there in just a moment. But before we do, I need to explain something. Being a slave was the most humbling position in Roman and Greek society. The slave did the lowliest chores, the dirtiest work, the most difficult, demanding jobs that nobody else wanted to do. And one of the most humbling, lowly, nasty jobs a slave could do was to wash the stinking, dirty feet of those they served. And when we come to John chapter 13, I got it here. When we come to John chapter 13, this is an event that you know about. This was uh, the, 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 what we call the Last Supper. And the guys had come into the room with their open-toed sandals. They had walked on the streets all day that are filled with dirt and mud and manure and garbage and sewage. And they had come into the room, and they were sitting at, if not uh, tables that were right on the floor, at least they were very near the floor, and they're sitting on the floor. So guess what? Their feet are really near the table and the other people sitting there. It's disgusting. And nobody had lined up anybody to wash their feet, and none of them were willing to do it. So that's the background. So we come to John chapter 13, verse 4. And it says, so he... He being Jesus, got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Then he has a little interaction with Peter, and then jump down to verse 14. He says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus was and still is the Lord, the Creator, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of the universe. But instead of demanding the honor as the Lord and the King and the Creator that all, He alone deserved, He chose to do the dirtiest, most common, most demeaning job a servant could do, wash the feet of his disciples. Listen, following in the steps of our Savior by serving one another in love means not looking for recognition, not looking for honor, 
not having others serve us, but to look for and do to others the lowly tasks, the dirty jobs, the hard work. More than anyone else on earth, Jesus showed this kind of humble servanthood. And he said, I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. So, how can we serve one another like this and follow Jesus' example? Well, in Philippians, the Apostle Paul taught us how to do it and how to serve one another in love. And he mentioned three things, and I'm going to just mention them very briefly this morning. But first of all, Paul told us that in order to serve, we have to practice humility. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. What's humility? Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking about yourself less, often, and about others more. That's practicing humility. Second, Paul said, do not be self-centered. Do learn to be sensitive to people's needs. Look at verse 4. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Listen, when I am trying to deal with my own stuff, right? When I'm trying to deal with my own problems, I struggle to get them off of my mind. And what happens is I start to think about them more and more, right? When you sit there and focus on your own stuff, guess what you're thinking about all the time? Your own stuff. When you start to look and focus on other people's stuff, serving in love, you begin to kind of forget your own stuff. And you know what? I see it time and time again, and I, I, I wish I would do it more often. I always forget. But you know what? When I serve others, I don't got time to sit and worry about my own stuff. And it gets my mind off of my stuff. So Paul says, don't look out for your own interests. Look out to the interests of others. Worry about them. Help them. Finally, Paul told us to have the attitude of Christ. Look at verse 4, or verse 5, sorry. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. The word that's translated mindset there in the original language means attitude. Paul commanded the Philippians to not do anything out of self-glory, but instead to regard others as better than themselves, to not be self-centered, to be others-focused. And he's saying, have the mindset, have the attitude Christ had. So what was the attitude Christ had that we're supposed to imitate? Well, look at the next verse, verse 6. Who being, and it says, have the mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Did you hear it? Did you hear it as I read the words? The very God of gods, the God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, had all of the privileges, all the rights, all the authority of being God, but they weren't something that he hung on to. He emptied himself of all of that, all of the rights, all of the things that he could have, and he chose. He chose to be born in a lowly, backwards place, 
in one of the more uh, brutal times in history into the home of a simple carpenter, one of the most physically demanding jobs of that day. In his life and ministry here on earth, Jesus chose the role of a servant, not a king, not a master, not a ruler, but a humble servant. That's the attitude God wants us to have. God wants us to have the attitude of humility, self-sacrifice for others. He wants us, he, and, and, and get this, he wants us to stoop low. What do I mean by that? He doesn't want us serving just those who can serve us back. He doesn't want us serving those who can pay us back. He wants us serving those who have no ability to serve us back. He wants us serving those who don't have any ability to pay us back. God wants us to be servants. So what are some ways to do that? What are some ways to actually put that into practice in our lives? Here you go. How about this? In our homes. Husbands, are you ready for this? How about you try and outserve your wife? Good luck with that. But how about you try? Huh? Wives, how about you continue trying to outserve your husband? Children. Let me get all, your, all the kids, young people, attention. How about you try and outserve your parents? Hmm. Parents, I don't need to tell you to out try, out try and outserve your children, you already do. How about in your work? How about being a servant at work? Huh? How about we go to work and with the attitude that we are going to outserve everybody else at work? Not because we're getting paid to do it, not because we have to do it, but because we want to do it. And we want to outserve everybody in the workplace, everybody there. In fact, in any relationship you have, if you put this into practice, it'll change. It'll change everything around you. Try and out, sir. Can you, can you imagine what this world would be like if everybody tried to outserve everybody instead of trying to get and be served? I think this world would be a radically different place. How about here at church? What would happen? What would happen if every one of us were to say something like this? I'm going to find something to do in this church where I'll serve God to help advance the kingdom of God reach people for Jesus Christ and help them mature in their faith. Whoa. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to be part of church. Not to be served. Not to get anything. But to put something in. I am going to do whatever I can. I'll find a way. So some of you are going to be here at 6 o'clock Monday morning, did I hear? To cook turkeys. Now those people are looking at each other like, uh. But you know what? That helps advance the kingdom of God. It's going to help reach people for Jesus. And it's going to help people uh, mature in their faith. 
This church has a reputation for our harvest supper, by the way, and it's a big reputation to live up to. And it takes everybody. But you know something? We need, and God needs, and God's calling all of us to be as involved in everything else as we are in harvest supper. For too many, harvest supper is, well, that's where I serve. And that's what I do. What if every Sunday, every day, we were saying, I'm going to find something to do in this church where I'll serve to help advance the kingdom of God, reach people for Jesus Christ, and help them mature in their faith. Do you think God would do something great with that? Oh, yeah. You think God could begin to change the world if every church was doing that? Well, he doesn't need us, but he would do it. The challenge, the challenge is to be a servant. I want to take a few moments in prayer. And I would invite you to ask God to help you be a servant. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we ask for your help. Because being a servant does not come naturally to us. For most of us, we'd rather let somebody else be a servant. And so this morning, Lord, we come before you and ask you to give each of us the courage to be a servant. Heavenly Father, there are those that are our, are our brothers and sisters who are dealing with illness and sickness. And we ask that you would be with them today. We have those that are still grieving loss. We ask that you would be with them. We have those that are facing surgery. We ask that you be with them and their families as they wait. Father, we ask that you would be with each of us as we try and let your light shine through us. Lord, we lift before you the prayer that you gave us. We pray with one voice, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I was uh, trying to think of a way to bring uh, this uh, service to a close, there was one song that kept running through my head. And Chris, Kathy told me that um, it wouldn't be very familiar to a lot of you. It's called Make Me a Servant. You can find it on page 653. Kathy's going to play through it again so you can hear the tune. And I invite you 
to make this your prayer before the Lord this morning. Listen as Kathy plays it one more time. you to rise and allow this to be our prayer this morning. servants. There's no fellowship time today because people are setting up for harvest supper. So, um, and I'm sure they can use your help even if you didn't sign up. So, grace, mercy, and peace be with us. From God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.